All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, in the most 2022 statement, if everyone could please silence their cell phones and turn their ringers off for a little bit, I would definitely most appreciate it. Um, good afternoon again. Very, very big day for the San Jose earthquakes with an exciting announcement to make uh, regarding our new head coach. To introduce myself, my name is Ted Ramey. I am the radio play-by-play -play announcer for the San Jose Earthquakes. And I say a lot of names over the course of a day or a game or broadcasts. And I like the names I'm going to be seeing here today and saying going forward in the future. Um, to introduce everybody up on the stage directly to my left, we have the president of the San Jose Earthquakes, Jared Shawley. Far left, we have the general manager of the San Jose Earthquakes, Chris Leach. And in the middle, we have the new head coach of the San Jose Earthquakes, Luchi Gonzalez. <laughs> Luchi will be taking over the San Jose Earthquakes head coaching full-time duties after the World Cup when he helps lead the U.S. to their first ever World Cup win. Luchi, no pressure. <laughs> Uh, just to give you a little bit of background on Lucci, he, of course, uh, MLS player, did make some appearances with the San Jose Earthquakes, FC Dallas Academy director from 2012 to 2018, was their head coach from 2018 to 2021, and he has been serving everybody up here. I want to give them a chance to speak, and Jared, I, I'm going to start with you. Thank you, Ted. Uh, and thank you to everyone for, for being out here today to welcome uh, Luchi Gonzalez as the next manager of the Earthquakes. Uh, this was a thorough process. Um, there were over a dozen candidates uh, that participated in the process. Uh, and I can say that Luchi was number one across the board uh, in all the criteria that, that we really valued at the club. Uh, for me, what stood out was Luchi's club-centric philosophy and approach uh, to how he views coaching in MLS and success in MLS. Uh, and it resonated with me because I think that's what we're about here in San Jose. Um, our very first phone call, our very first conversation we had, uh, Lucci was talking about the 48-year history of the San Jose Earthquakes, uh, his pride in leading us through our 50th season coming up here in 2024, uh, and talking about the deep roots and the fans and the supporters uh, and all the other different areas of, of our club. Um, we talked about the great potential that the San Jose Earthquakes have. Uh, and how some of that untapped potential is something that, you know, Lucci would be able to come in and take advantage of for us. Uh, so the fit was great from the start. I want to thank Lucci for accepting the role. I want to welcome him. I want to welcome his family to San Jose. Uh, and a big round of applause as Lucci Gonzalez uh, is welcomed here in San Jose for the San Jose Earthquakes. Thank you, Jared. Uh, Chris, I know you wanted to speak as well. Sure. Uh, good afternoon. Excited to uh, help find the next coach of the San Jose Earthquakes in Lucha Gonzalez. Uh, first, I want to start with a couple thank yous. Uh, thank you to those uh, other candidates that went through this very thorough process. Um, those other candidates put a lot of work into it as well. Uh, I want to thank the current interim staff who have done a good job since April in taking the reins. I uh, firmly believe they're going to finish these last nine games strong uh, with the team. I want to thank U.S. Soccer for allowing Lucci to um, go through this process, obviously during a busy time preparing for the World Cup. Um, and as Ted said, Lucci's background is very interesting from, from playing experience on a pro career in MLS to uh, leading one of the best academies, uh, arguably, uh, uh, in the league to um, having success at the coaching ranks with, with, F with FC Dallas as well as gaining invaluable experience with uh, the U.S. national team as they obviously look to compete on the world's biggest stage. As Jared said, Lucci fit, fit our uh, coaching profile the best. Uh, he's a coach, or, sorry, he's a club-centric guy. Um, he has a wealth of MLS knowledge. Um, he has elite tactical acumen and flexibility, and he's a leader. I uh, truly believe Lucci is one of the best young coaches in this country. Couldn't be more excited to welcome him to San Jose. And Lucci. Uh, thank you, Jared. Thank you, Chris. Uh, before I start, just an observation. When I came down about a, an hour ago, I noticed all these people with credentials. And they were wearing t-shirts. And it said, win. 
And in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, this is the press is really trying to send me a message here <laughs> in San Jose. It's a very clear message. Uh, but then I found out it's, there's a conference next, seminar next door. It's for, I think, credit, FICA score, or something like that. So <laughs> it wasn't the case. So, um, but anyway, look, it, honestly, to hear these things is very humbling. To be here in this moment is, is a big honor. Uh, I want to first thank my family, always supporting me through the journey of playing, coaching, uh, travel, living in different parts of the world. Um, always there till the end, always there. I want to thank San Jose Earthquakes, obviously. I want to uh, thank ownership, John Fisher. I want to thank the board, Katie, uh, technical leaders, Jared, Chris, John, Jed, front office, and this community. I see some familiar faces here. Seeing Joe there in the corner of my eyes is a big honor just to see an ex-teammate, a legend of the club, be here to support this moment. It just means uh, the world to me. Thank you, San Jose. Thank you to US Soccer. Uh, thank you to Greg, just giving me a chance, believing in me, being a part of the World Cup uh, cycle, qualifying, and now I get to represent US Soccer, all of you, uh, in a World Cup, uh, and that's really important to me. And, and San Jose respecting that timeline and respecting that commitment. Um, but I've grown so much in the last eight months through that experience. Uh, thank you to all the former coaches and players that uh, I've had the pleasure to work with. Um, or four, um, and honestly, just thinking about the team that I played with here in San Jose, or all alum, or all ex-Earthquake players, or Clash players, or San Jose uh, players of any of those, of those times, um, my, my goal is to make all those people proud of what they see on the field and off the field in this club. For club and for country, I like it. Uh, we are going to open it up to take some questions from the media now. You can look for uh, Jake and Pedro. They are going to be roaming around with microphones. All right, Michael Robertson, African American athlete. All right, Coach. Uh, a nice Latino community here in the Bay Area. Is that something that's uh, pleasing for you to come into? And the last time we were in this predicament, well, I want to say predicament, position, uh, there was a legend still playing, and that was Wando. So a different set of circumstances now. So what are your expectations to take over this team and also the community that's here in the Bay Area, San Jose, to be exact? Well, I went through a process when I did the interview, just understanding San Jose better. I, obviously, I did my own research and created my own analysis, um, but in that process and where the team's current moment is, um, there was a lot of alignment. There was a lot of alignment. Uh, ambition was built to start seeing the future and seeing the, the potential of the team, the current staff. First of all, I, I want to recognize the current staff and the job they've done um, as an interim staff to, to put the players and the, and the team on, on the right path. Uh, and connecting it to the overall vision of the club on and off the field. And that goes through culture and that goes through the product on the field. So, you know, the alignment I felt was, was strong after a process, uh, having a lot of conversations with Chris about the locker room, the culture, the expectations of that, and how it wants to be represented on the field tactically, technically, and then the ideas of personnel. You know, what is the investment going to be in the roster? What is the investment going to be in the staff to create a high performance environment so that the players can reap the benefit of that so that they can be their best, they can be confident, and they can execute and perform on the field. So high standards, high standards. I think that's the next step. Um, and we can talk all we want about it, and, and I'm excited to actually put it into action. I can't physically start on the field or in the office until 2023. That'll come. That's not the most important. Right now is what can we all do to continue to be the best today so that we can be ready for, for 2023. There's nine games left to play. The staff is very focused. The club wants to represent this community in the league at the, at the highest level possible. And so that's, I know that's, an, I fully support that and in line with that. And then for me, you know, the, the perception of where the club is today or the team, whether it's here in this room 
or in the league, it's maybe worse than what it is. I think there's a lot of potential. I think it's a high potential group and club. The academy's growing. You got young players uh, doing well and making their way. You've got guys that are putting, you know, very dangerous offensively and, and creating a lot of chances offensively. You, you have a good core. You have people that will die for this jersey on this roster. Can we refine it? Can we grow it? Can we build it? Absolutely. But I think we have a good starting point, and it's going to be my job to prove that. One more questions again, Jake and Pedro are around. Yes, Marco. Hi, Lucia. You Marco Yukolovich, you Sports Radio Service. Welcome to San Jose, and congratulations on the job. What initially attracted you to want to be the head coach of the Earthquakes, and are you the type that's got to want to you know, build the home, homegrown players and let them see what they can do instead of maybe trying to get transfers and free agents? What's your philosophy on that? Thank you. I mean, look, what's obvious is uh, there's been a big shift in focusing on uh, homegrown players and the, the academy. I know Jared and Chris have worked really hard with the, the staff uh, inside the club and leadership and ownership to invest in the academy. And you see it, you see it improving. I mean, you have more players on the youth national team uh, than ever before, maybe the most in the country right now. You have more players impacting the first team. Is there that reward of the transfer or a consistent starter or two, three, four starters from the academy? No, you're, the club's not there yet. Can it achieve that? Maybe. Um, but it's something that I have experience with. And I take, I take pride in being a product of development myself. Um, but I've also gone through my phase and matured and taken my steps to understand the balance of development and competition, especially now being with the U.S. national team, where again, you, you talk about the highest level American player, the highest standards, there to win. The tactics, the culture, the camaraderie, the unity, the mentality to get better each day is to get a result on the field and play for the fans. And so that's really transferred and, and helped me grow and take the next step. Everything I learned through my former experiences in Dallas had led me to be in this moment to grab the opportunity for San Jose. Yes, development's gonna be important. The homegrown growth and the academy gonna be connected, gonna be a complement to the next step that we wanna take. But the ambition is to, is to win, is to make the playoffs next year. Plain and simple. We must make the playoffs next year. That's gonna be our, our mentality, our objective, but uh, you know, the process is the most important for me. The steps and the process and how you get there, and how you play in the field, and how you develop the team and build that roster, uh, that's, that's, where, you know, that, that's where the work's got to be done. That's where everybody's got to believe. Fans, team, staff, me, leadership, we all got to believe to make next year's maybe at the end of the year moment count. But it's going to start with, with believing in the, in the next step, which is the process. Coach, congratulations. Anthony Flores with NBC Bay Area. Just heard what you said, but what do you think the biggest challenges are to getting to where you want to go, playoffs next season and, and, and in the future? Sure. Look, there's a lot we can't control. I mean, you, you see what's going on with a club like LAFC, and their level of their dynamic transfer market uh, actions and their investment, their fan base, their stadium, their facility. They're, you know, that, that they're doing uh, things in a positive way in the league. That doesn't guarantee them winning an MLS Cup. But, you know, it looks like they're going to make the playoffs different than last year. Don't forget, uh, last year they didn't make the playoffs. So this is a very competitive league. You know, you have half the teams in the league that can make the playoffs, but only one champion. So the positive to that, well, we, we can control a lot of things. We can control time care and, and improving things in the club with just thinking about it and putting effort into it and connecting with it and then we can invest in it and we can take the next step in our investment in it we can control that to get into the playoffs but then once it's like a two two phase type of league you got the playoff and then you got it's the american system it's the playoff and then the and then the champion at the end anybody that gets in the playoff why can't you win and so those are the the realities i think that we can control or the, the thoughts that we can control, but don't, don't focus on what we can. Other teams, other clubs are going to continue in their philosophy and their way, but what can we do 
uh, to, to be there. Um, and look, for me, I already made a clear statement of what the objective is for next season. Um, I hope to be here for many years. But the reality is also the ambition is if I'm sitting here after four years and we haven't won an MLS Cup, I'm going to be really disappointed. Or we haven't won a Supporter Shield, I'm going to be really disappointed. And I think that's the level of ambition we want for ourselves, for the club, and for the fans. And we're, and we're going to be ready to invest in that. And if we don't accomplish that, maybe I'll coach in the Bahamas next, right? <laughs> we'll see. Again, Jake and Pedro are roaming around with microphones. I know we had another one up here. Luchi, Carlos Justiz de Telemundo. Primero que nada, feliz de ver por ti. Ya contestaste esto, básicamente es una repetición más en, en español, pero ¿qué fue lo que te atrajo de, de este proyecto? Eh, hablaste un poco de que por fuera se ve peor de lo que es, pero para ti que vienes con un peligro alto, que vas a estar en un mundial, tomar un equipo que, que ha tenido sus bemoles ¿no? en, en resultados sobre todo, ¿qué, ¿qué es lo que te atrae para poder arrancar este proyecto? Eh, bueno, encantado de verte, Carlos, hace tiempo. Para mí, hablé un poco de el proceso cuando hice la entrevista, eh, hablamos de alinear nuestros objetivos, la visión del club, la visión mía de cultura, de, de fútbol y saber que ya hay piezas en el club, profes y jugadores y hay una academia creciendo y hay la potencia de inversión y un compromiso del dueño y el club de hacer una inversión, otro paso de inversión para, para conseguir los objetivos. Y esas son cosas muy positivas para mí. De mi experiencia último eh, en Dallas, eh, no era comple completo eh, esa, esas cosas. Y ahora para alinearlo bien, de la experiencia que he tenido con los Estados Unidos, de altas, eh, tener altas límites, altas expectativas y dar a los jugadores lo mejor que, que se puede en ese aspecto profesionalmente, con profes, en todos los eh, departamentos. Y esas son cosas que han sido natural en este proceso y por, por eso estoy acá con mucha alegría eh, para, para ir para adelante. Todavía no puedo empezar el trabajo, eso va a empezar en 2023 en la cancha, fuera de la cancha, conectando con Chris, con, con Jared, en qué podemos hacer con el equipo para mejorarlo. Y, y también aprender, escuchar, entender mejor el club y que, cuáles son las necesidades. Uh, again, one up here. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Uh, also in Spanish for Telemundo. Bienvenido, profesor, a, al área de, de la Bahía. Eh, se habla mucho, obviamente, y, y usted bien lo decía, lo, lo que significa históricamente esta franquicia. Eh, el primer impacto de ver eh, eh, en esas camisetas la, la palabra victoria. Pero también es cierto que se está viviendo una fase de, de transición eh, en el equipo y que vas a tener la oportunidad... Eh, por decirlo de alguna manera a distancia, al ver la evolución del equipo en esta fase final. Luego, tomándolo ya en la pretemporada de cara a la próxima campaña, ¿cuál aspecto sientes que es el más importante a fortalecer para precisamente poder trabajar e ir en rumbo al objetivo que, que son los playoffs? Gracias. Sí, como has dicho, el club tiene mucha historia. Yo acabo de decir, eh, tengo compañeros en el año 2002 eh, y esos compañeros fueron campeones. Esos compañeros fueron leyendas del club y no eran en, en ese momento. Crecieron y con, con tiempo fueron. No, no estaban acá diciendo yo soy leyenda. Con tiempo, con trabajo, fueron creciendo en ese aspecto. Y respetar eso es muy, muy lindo. Y saber que eso está en la historia es muy lindo. Pero también es difícil porque no puedes poner en la, los hombros toda la presión de la historia. Porque tenemos que hacer una carrera en, el, en la liga y cómo vamos a ser rápido, cómo vamos a ser dinámico si tenemos presión en nuestros hombros de la historia. Es reconocerlo, respetarlo, eh, pero al mismo vez saber que hay necesidad. Estamos en un tiempo nuevo, en un tiempo de cambio y tenemos que ser de otra manera, no la manera como el pasado, una manera nueva. Y eso para mí es, me da mucho entusiasmo, saber que conmigo en el proyecto con inversión, con, con una potencia ya en el equipo de jugadores y de profes, eh, con, con unas, eh, unos ajustes, se puede hacer algo muy, muy lindo en esta liga. Se ve, mira Austin, mira New England, mira Colorado, 
Equipos que en una temporada muy mal y en la próxima campeones de su conferencia o por lo menos los mejores. Y eso es muy posible en esta liga. Again, if you have a question, you can just raise your hand. If you need anything in, in English, because maybe the topic's a little different, uh, let me know. It'll come out a little different maybe, but just let me know. Uh, Jake Allen. Hi, Coach. Kylan Mills with Crown 4 News in San Francisco. Um, I know you talked a lot about how strong the youth system is with the earthquakes. They're now developing the second team. I know you're big on youth development, but how do you translate that success to success at the senior level? So the vision that I have for San Jose is for the world to really be impressed with the way San Jose acts and plays on the field. And that's at all levels. First team, academy, and that's at all levels in terms of personnel, players, staff, people. And so that vision for me, because well, I want someone that's never seen the San Jose Earthquakes play, they've never seen the first team play, they've never seen the academy play, but when they see them, they want to see more. And so that to me is important that we all have that objective top to bottom. But the first team has to be the example. The first team is the model. So my mission is to make sure that the first team is modeling that in terms of our playing style, in terms of our culture in the locker room, and in terms of our attitudes and our spirits on the field to give everything for each other and everything for our fans. And so that's where, you know, there was a saying with Guardiola, you know, we, we want, uh, the first team should play like the academy. And that, once upon a time was true. I think with evolution and with everything that I've been through, because believe me, I believed that for many years, the club should play like the first team. The academy should play the first team. And I'm excited because I saw the academy play against River Plate in the GA Cup. And they play with, with intensity, with intentions of attacking, breaking lines, getting in behind the last line, attacking the goal, tr triggers to press, courage to play, uh, it was impressive. I got goosebumps watching it. And it made me feel like I want to be a part of that. And that's the academy inspiring me. But I want to do the same back to them. So I think it's, it's all connected, but the first team is the model. Again, you can raise your hand if we do have questions. We're going to go over here. A uh, question for Leach and Jared. Stylistically, tactically, and then also on the business side, what made this the right move for the club now? I think stylistically, um, there, there's many paths to success. Okay, um, I think what we what we seek, what we endeavor is is results. Um, so we feel like through this interview process, through the experiences that Lucci has, his knowledge of MLS, his deep knowledge of MLS, we feel like will give us a competitive advantage in this league to win today. Okay, so stylistically, I, I think you can ask Lucci this this part of it, but as he's been talking about today, I think he aligns with what's living and breathing in this club currently. Uh, which means a fast-paced style that's with the ball, dominant, able to progress up the field, break lines, get, get scoring opportunities, and be robust defensively and killers defensively to win the ball back. Ask him what, what, what that style is that he sees, but for us through this interview process is really important because I'm hearing some undertones already with some of these questions. Just want to make crystal clear that the intent is to win. That's part of the reason why we hired Lucha Gonzalez. Uh, you'll see a competitor, you see a guy that wants to win as much as, as much as we do. And that is very important to us, full stop. I just, <clears throat> I'll add to that. I, I mentioned in my opening statement, but um, from the first conversation Lucha and I had, um, I knew we had a club-centric approach. Um, and I know that that's what is a fit for us here in San Jose. Um, he's going to connect with all the stakeholders of the club, the past players, uh, fans, supporters, uh, staff, um, and really be a part of growing us in all aspects, uh, both on the field and off the field. Um, we talked about doing appearances in the community, uh, can, making sure our players are connected to the community, and making sure that every player that comes to play for San Jose is doing it for the right reasons. Um, and that really resonated with me. I think that is a model um, that, that works well here for the Earthquakes. Uh, and I think that connection is really going to, the fans are going to feel that uh, right out of the gate. Again, if there's any questions.
Hi, Luchi. Abel Langano from Aerial Sports Network. What was your thought process in leaving a national team with a lot of future to come and coach an MLS team? Thank you. Yeah, look, the timing, I wasn't gonna leave my commitment with US soccer in the middle, in the middle of it. So that's, that was clear from the beginning in talking to San Jose that if there's an interest, it's gonna be for the future, for 2023. San Jose um, went through their process and they've been nothing but respectful of that and supportive of that. And the way they handled it with US soccer, uh, um, I'm just very thankful. It, it already shows, it's indicative of the way the club works and, and how they communicated uh, with, with US soccer. Um, look, nobody in US soccer and Greg himself have a, a commitment in 2023. We're all focused on the World Cup. You know, things uh, we plan to do well, so that could open up doors, of course. Um, maybe some staff have something waiting for them, maybe others don't. Um, this was a natural process where San Jose made a, an, an inquiry to talk to me. We got to know each other a little bit better, and here we are today. Excited for the future, for the next step. Um, but for me to see and align the vision that I have with ownership and this leadership, with the potential of the roster today the way it is, without even touching it, which we are gonna make changes, we are going to evolve it and grow it. It, it, it for me, it was a no-brainer uh, to, to be a part of this project, to be in this place, to be in the Bay Area for my family so that we can be the best versions of ourselves and grow here. Talk about creativity, ambition, innovation, open-mindedness. That's, that's what I want for my family. That's what I want for me. I wanna be a part of that. And then the people that I've already got to, to know for the project, I'm gonna get to know the players better. I'm gonna get to know the staff better. We're gonna, I'm gonna understand them. I'm gonna ask questions. They're gonna ask me questions and, and we're gonna go from there. Uh, and then finally, the, again, the project, you know? This is, there's a lot of lessons that we've all learned. Um, and now putting that collectively together and acting on it, uh, I couldn't pass up this opportunity. And even though it's a little early or I could have waited till I, I wasn't in a wait till after the World Cup, it was very clear to me what I wanted to do next and it's, and it's be the head coach of San Jose Earthquakes. Uh, Fabian Rinkle, thank you for taking the question. San Jose is full of young talents. What are some of the players that you're most excited to, to take, uh, to manage and to work with? Thank you. Yeah, again, I was, I was uh, seeing how San Jose has the most players in the youth national teams, U17s, U15s, and then you had a U20 qualifier with several guys. And, um, for, for me, you know, you have, you have the players that have already made an impact on the first team, like Cade, you know, um, he's had his, his experiences, his ups and downs. He's still really young players, 2003, 2003, okay? <laughs> Tell me how many 2003s are starting on first teams in the world. And he's made a positive, really positive impact out the gate. So, but he's going to continue to learn, and he has a lot of potential. And again, it's not about a debut for him; it's about a career. How can we help a player like that and his teammates, Achoa, uh, you know, the, uh, Nico? How can they have careers? And so, you know, you have great examples of that with Jackson or JT, who have more of a career and they have more experience, leaders in the team, and live, live you know, breathe and would die for the jersey. Um, so it's, it's a natural process, it's an evolution. But I look forward to getting to know uh, the young players more and, and, and push them, and, and, but also support them. And, and because again, it's about a career. Anybody can make a debut. How, how can they uh, can show a sustained success? And, and we have a responsibility, I have a responsibility to help them out. We're gonna take uh, two more questions. So again, if you have a question, please raise your hand. Thank you. Robert Jonas from Quakes Apple Center. Uh, welcome to San Jose. I imagine when you were uh, drafted 20 years ago, you probably didn't see this moment coming, but uh, it's great to see the full circle bringing you back. Of course, of course. To the organization. <laughs> not, your, not your first thought, clearly. But you know, throughout the process of this courting to, to take this job, I imagine you've had many conversations about what the club can offer and the assurances they can give you that you can accomplish the goal to win with this club. Um, can, I was hoping you could detail some of what those assurances were and how confident are you that this organization will be able to give you the resources to be flexible enough 
to have the investment necessary to be a winning organization. Yeah, look, I, if there's areas of detail that I can't go into based on my lack of area of expertise, I mean, Chris or Jerry can, can chime in, but for me, it's, you know, I will say we, we looked at club spending for staff, for the roster, historically, transfers in, transfers out, historically. Uh, what, are the, what are the relevant and competitive, high competitive teams doing in the league, the other clubs? So we went through a process to, to d discuss, debate, analyze, until we got to what we feel is an alignment of the next step for San Jose, the realistic next step. We have a lot of flexibility in what we can spend next based on the preparation of the last year, year and a half to, to make that happen. And so what I can say in, in a simple way is the club is ready to invest more than it ever has. Next, the club is ready to put together a staff, a high performing staff with more support than it ever has. So those are the things that were super important to me even before my own personal situation because how am I gonna negotiate for myself personally if the project isn't aligned with the ambition that, that we're talking about here and, and especially everything that I've experienced. So, you know, you'll, you'll get more details soon. I won't give any until, unless these guys want to, but, uh, but that's something that uh, I'm sure will be, will be clear uh, in the coming months. And we're gonna take uh, one more question and then we will have a photo opportunity after this. Thank you. I'm with Linda Media Group. My name is Linda Broida. I would just want to ask you, when you were growing up, who was your soccer idol? Who did you want to be like and who inspired you? Um, just want to know. Well, you know, I was, just, I was just reminded that 20 years ago I was a player. Here. <laughs> 20 years ago. It's a long time ago. Um, and I was surrounded by legends on that team. And I already mentioned Joe's here, but talk about Jeff Agus, Landon Donovan. I'll tell you something, my father always thought I, sh I should have started over Landon. And he's a crazy son of a gun. So it shows you the passion he had and the belief he had in me. There was no way I was ever gonna play over Landon, give me a break. But just being around that, that team was really inspirational for me. You know, I was a young player, didn't have a second team to, to to gain confidence, to get opportunities, so I could bridge my youth, my college experience to the first team. MLS went from 12 to 10 teams that year. So, you know, I, it was a year that, you know, I wish I could have given more, done more. But it also, it, it did start my, it, it gave me an eight year playing career to have my next experience. But it also really <coughs> taught me and helped me, it developed a conviction in me that I needed to help the next generation of players so we have more Landon Donovan's, so we have more Jeff Aguses, so we have more of them coming through the system. And I'm gonna learn to, to develop them, and I'm gonna learn to coach them so that when I win a championship, it's gonna be as a coach. And so that's been something that's, that's, you know, I'm not a big romantic, but that's maybe that romantic side of it for me, personally. And then, and then I think, you know, growing up in the, in the 80s, early 90s, the World Cup was here in 94, who didn't love to watch Maradona create, who didn't love to watch Batistuta score goals and Van Basten score goals. I mean, we all had our, our idols back then. Um, you know, in terms of the American player, I would say, uh, the, the, you know, the, the Claudia Reynas, and then even someone who's younger than me, like Clint Dempsey, to play with personality, to play with fight. And I, and I work with a player right now, his name is Christian Pulisic, and he is not only just a world, you know, world-class level player, but also a world-class human being. And what you learn also is that the, these special players, the only way they can be successful is by being also a good human being. With, with you know, work ethic, good, being a good teammate, good communication, respect, all those values as well that I've, I've learned in the national team, that it's not just elite talent, special talents, it's complementing it with, with uh, you know, values as well that are really important, core values that are important to me that are gonna be important for this club, that are important. Uh, devoted fans, uh, members of the Earthquakes family that are here, of course, my fellow media members, thank you so much for being here today for this historic announcement. 
Jared, Chris, congratulations on the hire. Lucci, first off, condolences. You have to deal with me and Joe Cannon much more than you did in the past. But for everyone, uh, welcome to the San Jose Earthquakes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And again, we will be doing a photo opportunity. Thank you so much for joining us today.